just just a just a question in in terms of yes. Dubai, how how was your experience setting up there? Because there there's a coach that I have spoken to, um, and he kind of he was he was struggling a little bit in Dubai at the beginning. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. I think it was mainly his problem was because it's a very kind of, shall we say, touristy spot. And in the summer, pretty much there's no one around. So okay. he, he was struggling to run like an all year round program because may, basically his clients, when it got to the summer, they were leaving uh -huh. because he, he had a, a massive expat community of, of clients. True. True, true. So with, with Dubai, obviously, uh, like you said, the weather is a massive factor uh, to set up the business. So the weather is nice, uh, let's say, from, from end of October up to early May. Um, so in these months, let's say the weather is like, I would say, the summer in uh, the US, where the temperature is just acceptable. You can play outside. There's no problem. The level of humidity is quite high, but it's it's fine, no problems. But from, let's say, May up to October, the weather is really, really hot. Yeah. And it's very, very difficult to run any sessions outdoors, except yeah. in the night, let's say, after, after uh, 7 p.m., 8 p.m., where the humidity is high, but the weather is a little bit difficult. So what we used to do in Dubai, we used to follow up the calendar of the school. So we set up three terms, September, December, January, March, and then April, uh, let's say end of May, early June. And then we go indoors to run the summer camps. Uh, now the summer camps, the programs are different. Some of them are very specific, let's say basketball, football, whatever. But me and the company, when I used to work, we used to do multi-sports activities. Yeah. Uh, the thing which is good with Dubai over the summer is there is no problems with the facilities. There's plenty of facilities simply because the schools, uh, uh, all the schools, they do have their own facilities. They have their own indoor facilities. Some of them, they have two or three different uh, sports halls uh, where at the same time you can find like two or three companies working at the same time at the same school because they have uh, enough facilities. Uh, true, the expat community is, is, is very, very important, but usually people, they travel for two to three weeks. So when you set up a, a, a camp, you do have, uh, let's say, the average of 60, 70, up to 150 kids weekly uh, coming in and out because the registrations in the camps, they, we, we used to do them like weekly registrations. Every Sunday, you can, you can uh, renew your registration in the camp. So with football outdoors, end of May, that's it. It'll be it'll be very very difficult to run any sessions out outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, the the market is is growing very fastly to the point where my last year in there, March twenty twenty, we approached let's say a stagnation, if you know what I mean. Yeah. We've approached the point where. To grow a business is quite hard because people, what they do, they go work in companies, they understand the market up, they go and run their own business because it's very easy to set up a business in Dubai. There is no uh, taxation. Uh, the government are very supportive to help people uh, start businesses and invest their, uh, uh, their money. Uh, and also, the schools are like private companies, so they do need to run their facilities to to generate money so then they can look after their facilities. Uh, so there is no issues. You just need to approach the school. They let you know when they are free and available. And then once you negotiate the, the price, either hourly price or termly price or yearly price, and then that's it. You can start working uh, the day after. Uh, in terms of staff also, there is plenty of people, especially who comes from the UK, like young people who get their... Uh, new badges, let's say FA level one, FA level two. They just moved to Dubai as PE teachers and at the same time part-time uh, uh, football coaches. Yeah. Um, when I started the, in Dubai, we used to have like four or five soccer schools. We used to have uh, Manchester United Soccer School, Arsenal Soccer School, eSports. And I used to work for International Football Academy, which used to be sponsored by Barclays, the bank. 
Um, I used to share the office with Teddy Sheringham, if you know, the ex-Man United uh, upfront striker. Uh, and then in 2012, I felt like I need the challenge, I need to move on. So I moved to another city mm. where football wasn't very, very popular. And I've started my business in there. I've started the se a first session with eight kids and I've sold it out with 540 kids with 49 different nationalities. Um, and then I had, I had to go back home after COVID because the business was quite slow in Dubai and my family also... Uh, starts to grow and because of you know family issues the, st the, the school for my kids and my wife's uh, work I had to go back home to settle for a bit before now like I said I'm, I'm looking to start a new, a new challenge so if you need anything with uh, information about setting up a business in Dubai or, or helping the coaches in there or whatever anything with with regards of, of Dubai and soccer Please let me know anytime I can help you or any person who's in there. I can link them into academies. I can find them like part-time hours. I can help them with the business links if they want to set up as, let's say, as an investor or as a normal, as a normal worker. There is no issues at all. It would be a pleasure.